Real Friends, they dropped their new album, Blue Hour. We had Real Friends on the podcast. Finally, finally. They're, they're back and they are finally on the podcast because they've, mm-hmm. they've been back for a minute. We've been wanting to chat with them for a minute and it finally lined for- up. Since like the beginning of the podcast, they've yes. been a name that has been always in like conversations for like our, our year goal. Yeah. And so finally got it. Check. We, we checked that one off the, the old yeah. bucket list there. Um, mm-hmm. Kyle was a great time to chat with. It was a fantastic interview. Um, mm-hmm. And it was awesome to dive into the first Real Friends record in many years. Obviously, they had some EPs uh, yeah. coming back, but the first full length in a hot minute here. Hot minute. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I have... I have given my opinion on Real Friends on the podcast before. It has not always mm-hmm. been uh, the, the nicest opinion, more so talking um, live. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and, live shit. and um, you know, I, uh, I've laid that all to the side going into this because I heard the singles off this record, um, you know, in preparation for the interview. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh oh, I think I like real friends. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm becoming a fan. Because yeah. um, you know, I, I've always, I've always respected them, but I was like, I've seen this band so many times already now, and they just came back, and I'm, I think I'm good uh, for the mm-hmm. foreseeable future. Was kind of where I was at with them. Um, so I, you know, we we kind of stopped covering them. We didn't, we didn't really cover the the rollout here at all. Um, but obviously got to chat about the record now because mm-hmm. we we were both we both you know before that interview were like holy fuck those holy singles fuck. bro i've been missing out yeah. like i felt like i just you know i just took your word for you know the live shit and i was like okay you know maybe if, if they fall into my lap i'll listen to it but then we the fucking album holy shit yeah yeah but, blew me away yeah but even even off the off the off the the live shit uh conversation like we we mm. covered their their stuff you know yeah. the the previous new releases and mm-hmm. we were like these are good but nothing nothing had like totally blown us away to the point yeah. where i was like i'm i'm buckled the fuck in on the real friends train now mm-hmm. um and all it took was the singles off this record for me to uh to feel that this is to commit. Uh, yes with all of that being said to summarize it in one sentence um mm-hmm. and to agree with uh, what Kyle said in the interview, this is hands down the best real friends record. Um, without a doubt, I'll, yeah. I'll confidently say that, um, mm-hmm. this record is so strong front mm-hmm. to back. Um, mm-hmm. and I love every single second of it. 100%. Damn. Every single second. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> Oh my God. It feels like we've like opened up a new chapter. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh my new god. Lore. New lore. <laughs> new lore. Shane's a fucking real friends fan now. Oh my god. Um, no, I really enjoyed this record. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, just in general with music, it's harder for me to get into an artist or like fully be able to fully appreciate them with singles or with EPs, even. It's just I feel like I need to sit down and listen to an artist for like 25 to 40 minutes to actually be able to process it. I don't know. Maybe I need to fix that. That's that's something for me in the future. Um, so actually being able to sit down and listen to this album a couple of times. I think I listened to it like three or four times um, just to solidify my thoughts. Holy fuck. I feel like I've been missing out for a minute. And um, I feel like I need to dive into their discography now. Um, it, you know, itches that part of my brain where it's that kind of like the vocals where it's very emotional but it's still very high energy at points. Um, there's a the flow of the album is very up and down in my opinion. Um, but it's not as jagged as you would think it would be because it does feel like the songs are kind of switching off. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there are points where they're switching off where it goes from, you know, soft, softer, but just you know not as high energy to super high energy, fucking running around all that shit. Um, the vocals are fucking insane. This type of vocal, I don't know how the hell you would classify it. I know it's like a subgenre or whatever, but this type of vocal is like one of my favorites that we've discovered just on the podcast because it has such a nostalgic feel to it. It's not it hell hell, it is not like fucking bedroom emo, but that type of like emotion raw emotion that you could hear at some points in the album. I fuck with it heavy i like this record a lot 
Um, a lot of my favorites are the singles, but again, I'd be like, I, I'm pretty sure it's just because it's that familiarity that I have with it already. Mm -hmm. But damn, Our Love was like a sad song. That shit feels like something I would have listened to on repeat in like 2020. Like it has, it has that vibe of just like, I'm going to stream the fuck out of this and not listen to anything else for like a, a month, probably mm -hmm. that they, they put something special in that song. I also really liked Waiting Room, which was another single, I'm pretty sure. Um, Never Has Become Always was really good. And uh, This Year's Out to Get Me was really good. I Oh, and then the fucking closer. I really enjoyed the closer a lot because um, it felt like a closer. Album's incredible. Really enjoyed it. And I really feel like I've been missing out now. It's like, fuck, my, like my third fucking real friend's eye has been opened. It's incredible. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, yeah, this, um, it, it's, as I said, front to back, hands down, fucking mm -hmm. incredible. Um, I know you mentioned the, the track listing and, and the flow. Mm -hmm. Um, there are definitely a fair few slower tracks on the record, but, you know, with, with the, the emotion that you get throughout the entire record, um, mm -hmm. and, and the, the vocal delivery and all that, mm -hmm it fits like I, i'm i'm always someone that's like oh man come on you serious here but i oh, also man. know what i'm getting myself into when i turn on a pop punk record um yeah like mm -hmm. you know and i can complain about it as much as i want but if the but if the band flows it the right way which in mm -hmm. this case i think they did um it it does not annoy me or upset me as much as if you stick the slow song smack dab in the middle and then pretend like it didn't even happen <laughs> stan atlantic um i'm forever oh, whoa, what was that <laughs> i'm forever mad about the flow of uh pink elephant and yeah, I will continue drink, drink to drown. Come on. And I will continue to bring it up until the end of time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the, the up and down ebb and flow. Um, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Um, and as I said, it, I, I know what I'm getting myself into when I turn on a pop punk record and when, when mm -hmm. I turn on a real friends album, um, mm -hmm. I've heard plenty of, of real friends going into this where I knew where this was heading. Um, yeah. So I was okay with that. But if it's your first time hearing it, real friends they they they're very emotional and mm -hmm. they 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 like the they like to have a slow moment or two or three maybe four maybe um, four yeah. yeah how are they feeling honestly how, yeah. however they're feeling mm -hmm. um my favorite hands down is our love was like a sad song come on uh, man it's so fucking good dude, it's so good best yeah. song on the record easy mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's it's so fucking good it's so it's like the pinnacle of like what we were just describing the the raw emotion that you can hear in the vocals that song is the pinnacle of that um mm -hmm. because it's so on the nose and um you know the vocal delivery and the emotion that you feel uh, really drives the point home um mm -hmm. i like the way it opens um mm -hmm. because again you know it does set that tone of like there's there's going to be a little bit of everything on here you know it opens yeah. up very slowly mm -hmm. um and then kicks you uh, immediately with Our Love Was Like a Sad Song, which is just such a big, almost anthemic uh, track. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this record. Um, you know, pleasant, pleasantly surprised, but I also had high expectations once I heard um, the singles going into this that uh, I was probably going to like it a little bit. Maybe just like a little, like a hair. A little, little bit. A little bit. Smidge. You know? Yeah, like a little, little sprinkle of liking the record. Yeah, yeah. they'll they'll oh, be yeah. they'll be on tour, uh, starting very mm -hmm. soon. Um, mm -hmm. Headlining with uh, Can't Swim, Carly Cosgrove, and Slow Joy. Um, so if that's coming to a town, city, state near you, uh, you should hit it up. Mm -hmm. Hit that shit up. Hell yeah! For real, yeah.